Well, once again, I'd like to welcome everyone to a new edition of Digging the Details with Jim and Dean. And I'd like to introduce my co-host, who is a wonderful writer, artist, and Disney aficionado par excellence, Dean Brinkerhoff. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me again. Of course, I'd like to introduce you as well. You are Jim Fanning, a Disney historian, author, blogger, and YouTube sensation. Thank you, Fritz. And today we're going to be talking about one of Walt Disney's biggest, but somehow today overlooked in a way, stars, James MacArthur. Dean, what can you tell us about James MacArthur for those who might not know who he is? James MacArthur is a little bit more of an obscure character to those who may not be familiar with Walt's era Disney. And by Walt, I mean Walt Disney, of course. James MacArthur starred in a few uh, great classics from the 1950s and 60s, um, his first being Light in the Forest as James Butler. Um, he also starred in Third Man on the Mountain as Rudy Matt, which is a film that um, created a bit of a buzz at Disneyland with Walt Disney's uh, new Matterhorn attraction based on the Swiss mountain that's seen behind you currently, Jim, <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> uh, James MacArthur also starred in Kidnapped as David Balfour, a wonderful swashbuckler, and also in another technically swashbuckler, Swiss Family Robinson as Fritz, uh, one of the children of the Swiss family. Um, lots of great films from my childhood, and I haven't quite seen Kidnapped yet, um, but I'm hoping for a Disney Plus release one day, and in addition to um, that Light in the Forest is a little bit more obscure, but Third Man on the Mountain, I'm happy to report, is available for those who are subscribers now to Disney Plus as of only a few weeks, a couple months ago, along with Swiss Family Robinson. So I'm gr grateful that his work is able to be displayed on um, these accessible options for fans of Disney and fans of uh, cinema as well. James MacArthur is a very accomplished actor who started pretty young and um, didn't start out with Disney, but had a little bit of a, a career stint with them. Uh, Jim, where did James MacArthur first start? Well, it's interesting. I always say it's interesting. Would I be saying it if it wasn't interesting? We hope <laughs> not. Walt Disney first saw James MacArthur in a TV drama that was then made into a theatrical film called The Young Stranger. And the 1950s were, of course, the golden age of the great live TV dramas. That's also where James Dean came from before he was a movie star. So there was great writing, directing, and acting in those wonderful live dramas. In its first incarnation on the Climax Anthology series, The Young Stranger was called Deal the Blow and was directed by John Frankenheimer, who would also direct the movie version. And the title was changed to The Young Stranger. And I think it's very interesting that Walt Disney seemed to want and need someone with a little more heft and a little more, a little more seriousness, because his stock company of Tommy Kirk and Tim Considine came from the Mickey Mouse Club, and not to say that they weren't great performers, especially Tommy Kirk. Uh, all we have to do is see Old Yeller for evidence of that. But I think he was looking for a different type, and he was going to be making The Light in the Forest, which, as you said, was a very serious drama. An important part of the audience at that time were teenagers, and, of course, teenagers have always been an important segment of the audience, but exhibitors and producers in the 1950s were particularly interested in reaching that audience because grown-ups were staying home to watch television, whereas teenagers, of course, always want to get out of the house and be out with their friends or with their girlfriends or boyfriends. So he needed somebody with that kind of heft, if you will, and he saw that in The Young Stranger. The Young Stranger is about a teenager who is sort of mistaken for being a juvenile delinquent, even though he's not. 
And Walt was very anti-juvenile delinquent movies, which was what was happening then. He spoke out several times saying that that's not a representation of America's youth. So that when he saw, one can assume, James MacArthur in sort of an anti-juvenile delinquent role, I think Walt responded. But most of all, responded to his charisma, his appeal, and his acting ability. So for The Light in the Forest, he cast James MacArthur in this very, this very intense role in a very intense movie, especially for Disney. And I'm sure that he was also planning on making Third Man on the Mountain. Again, a role that would not be right for Tommy Kirk. So here, I have a, bit of a hard time seeing him or perhaps someone like Tim Considine in that role. James MacArthur certainly brings out that heft. That's a great word that you keep bringing up um, that really describes him and his personality, what he brings to the table. Yes, and he had sort of an innate seriousness about him, an introspection. And also, he was very athletic. So that came across, too, especially, again, in contrast to somebody like Tommy Kirk. Tommy did play athletes in Disney movies, but... You know, he was a different physical type. Again, James MacArthur, perfect for playing the mountain climbing Rudy in Third Man on the Mountain. We can also assume at this time that Walt wanted to film Kidnapped because he had already done Treasure Island, another Robert Louis Stevenson story. But again, he had to have the perfect person for the role of David Balfour. And with James MacArthur, again, the perfect physical type, and the perfect age, and a little bit more intense for that very suspenseful story, much more so than Treasure Island. But also, James MacArthur was of Scottish descent. So this movie that was going to be filmed in Scotland, all about Scottish culture and people, he needed someone very specific. So I think when he said, oh, here's James MacArthur, we're signing him to a contract, he would be perfect for Kidnapped. In fact, when Darby O'Gill and the Little People was being filmed in 1958, Walt spoke to Robert Stevenson about making Kidnapped, and The Light in the Forest had been released in 1958. So I think Walt was saying, here we have James MacArthur, and he's really proven himself in The Light in the Forest, so we have who we need for that particular movie. Let's make it. And as you mentioned, Dean... Kidnapped is one of the least well-known of all of Walt Disney's live-action films. It is available on DVD for those who would like to seek it out. So I think it may be a Disney Movie Club exclusive. It is. Aha, okay. So in talking about Kidnapped, I don't want to give too much away, but spoiler alert, he's kidnapped. (laughs) (laughs) It's right in the title. And there's a lot of great moments that director Robert Stevenson captured in the film from the Robert Louis Stevenson story, like the famous walk up the staircase. There's some really fun print advertisements where they really tried to make it like a Hitchcock film. So I really like that angle on it. Something I didn't know. James MacArthur's athletic ability came to play in, in the movie Kidnapped because he had to do sword fighting and had to do all kinds of physical feats. Certainly his physicality was shown in Third Man on the Mountain. In fact, they had to kind of stop him from climbing the mountains in real life because he learned how to do it and then he wanted to do it. And the insurance company was saying, hey, you can't because you could fall and, and get very seriously hurt. And then what would happen to the movie? So I remember you're telling me a couple of weeks ago about um, him not really wanting much of a stunt double. He wanted to do it all himself and tying right into that insurance company telling him, no, you can't do that. <laughs> he probably got away with a little more than they wanted him to, I assume. These heroic roles had a culmination in one of Walt Disney's biggest hits, which you already mentioned, was Family Robinson. So everything James MacArthur had done until then kind of all led up to that big hit in which he co-starred with Tommy Kirk. i tell you where I'd really like to be. Walking down the night, I guess. Like on a Sunday after church. And all the girls stroll past, all dressed up. Do you think when we get to New Guinea, if we ever do, there'll be any girls our age? 
By the time we get to New Guinea, we won't care what age they are. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget Moonshi. <laughs> One of my favorites. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of today's edition of Digging the Details with Jim and Dean. And he's Dean. And he's Jim. And we'll see you next time.